Hey you, do you want to play a game of noughts and crosses? Okay, I'll go first. Okay, interesting move. Did you know that Americans call this tic-tac-toe? It's a weird name, isn't it? Oh, look at that. It was a draw. Pretty boring, isn't it? I mean, we could just play again until someone wins, but there's probably going to be a lot of draws, isn't there? Have you ever wondered why that is? Why is it that every time you play noughts and crosses, it feels like it's always a draw? Like, why can I never seem to beat anyone over the age of six at this stupid game? Well, it's because noughts and crosses is a solved game. What does that mean? Well, a solved game is a game that when all players play perfectly, the outcome is 100% determined. If a game is solved, it means that at any point in a match, from any of the possible board states or positions, if both players play perfectly, the outcome will always be the same. From the very first move, you know what the outcome of the game's gonna be, so long as every player plays perfectly. Noughts and Crosses is one of these games, a solved game. If neither player makes a mistake, Noughts and Crosses will always result in a draw with no exception exceptions whatsoever. In theory, any turn-based game that has no luck and no hidden information can be a solved game. You're not going to solve games like poker or, I don't know, Hearthstone anytime soon. Because these games both heavily feature luck and hidden information. The next card you draw from your deck is entirely luck-based. This means that even with perfect play, there is a percent chance that you don't draw one of the few cards that you needed as an out in that position. There's also information hidden from you. Your opponent's cards and the state of your own deck are both hidden from you, meaning you can only make decisions based off of probabilities and psychological tells. Sometimes you just get unlucky. Sometimes the best player, who did nothing wrong, loses anyway. Chess is an example of a game that could theoretically be solvable. There's no hidden information and there's no luck involved. But chess is not a solved game, and chances are it will be next to impossible to solve because of how complex it is and how many possible board states there are. But chess is theoretically solvable. It has no luck and it has no hidden information. If someone could mathematically calculate the perfect move in any board state at any given time from the very first turn, then the game could theoretically be solved. Chess does have some solved board states though. There are are endgame positions where theoretically perfect play always results in the same outcome every time. Like this rook and pawn endgame. This is a win for white if both sides play perfectly. Although without precise play, black has some chances to draw this game. But the more pieces you add to these endgames, the harder it becomes to solve. And from the very start of a game, you've got no chance. But even having said that, chess is obviously significantly more complex than noughts and crosses. Both games have no luck and no hidden information, but because noughts and crosses is so simple, having a small board with limited winning situations, the game gets solved fairly easily. But the same just can't be said for chess. A fairly simple rule set was written to allow you to play perfectly in noughts and crosses. It's pretty wordy, but here's some of it. If your opponent has two in a row, block it. If your opponent has a move that creates two winning lines, then you should block that move. If you can create that situation for yourself, you should do that. Etc, etc, it goes on for a while. Point is, this game is entirely solved. Now if your opponent makes a mistake, you can win yourself a game. And a game that is solved requires perfect play from both players at all times. If either player makes a single mistake, the opponent can often guarantee themselves a win. But if no mistakes get made, every game ends in a boring old draw. But what other solved games are there? Well, the list is a bit long, and some of them are more solved than others. Some are entirely 100% solved, and some are only partially solved. Meaning there are certain opening lines that can guarantee a win or a draw for a player, but there are others that haven't quite been figured out yet. Half of these games I haven't even heard of, but one of them that all of us would have heard of is called Connect 4. Connect 4 is a solved game. On a classic 7x6 grid, the player that goes first can always win, assuming perfect play. The first move from the starting player has to be them plopping their little counter directly into the middle column. If you start in these two columns, the game will end in a draw. Start in these four outside columns and you are guaranteed a loss with perfect play from both sides. Now, all of this obviously does assume that we're both playing perfect Connect 4 games, but we're all incredibly gifted, highly intellectual players here, so we'll just take that part for granted. And there are over 4 trillion possible board states in Connect 4. But despite all that, very, very intelligent mathematicians with, quite frankly, way too much time on their hands figured out the perfect moves at all given points in the game. There's a handful of examples of a perfect game of Connect 4, and this is one of them. It would take 41 moves to finish this game, and the game ends when the player that went first places their final piece in this slot right here. So we said that chess isn't solved, but there is a variant of chess that actually is solved. 
It's called losing chess or anti-chess. Essentially, it's just chess, but the objective of the game is to lose all of your pieces or be stalemated. There's a couple of extra rules. Like if your piece has the opportunity to capture another piece, you have to do that. You cannot make a non-capture move if there is a capture move available to you. The king can be captured just like any other piece and it can't be checked or checkmated. The very first move of a perfect game of losing chess is Wyatt playing pawn to e3. Checkers is also a solved game too. Both players can guarantee a draw on a standard 8x8 board. This board here is 10x10, which is why this game is actually still worth playing. With both checkers and losing chess, if one player plays an imperfect move, there are not necessarily known ways to guarantee an outcome from that position. The game is only solved with a set of perfectly executed moves. This is known as a game being weakly solved. The game has an understanded perfect move from both sides turn by turn for the entire game. But if either player deviates from that, it is unknown if there are any other perfect moves that can be played from those imperfect positions. Basically, the skill comes back into the game the moment one player throws a wild card move into the mix. Weakly solved games may be strongly solved one day, but at the moment the information just isn't calculated yet. There's plenty of examples of solved games, most of which are very obscure as far as I can tell, but it raises a lot of interesting questions about game design in the future. Any turn-based game that fits these two criteria can theoretically be solved. So if you wanted to design a game that fits these two criteria, you'd have to be very careful about how simple or complex you make the game. If the game isn't complex enough, the game just might become solved, and once the game's solved, any opportunity for high level play to emerge is completely demolished. If the game's too simple, high level players would essentially know the outcome of the game before it's even begun. But most modern games don't really fit this criteria. Turn-based games are fairly hard to come by in modern gaming as it is, and I can't personally think of any turn-based games with no luck or hidden information that were released in the last... ever actually. Other than board games designed hundreds of years ago, there's not really that many good examples, are there? If you can think of any examples, do let me know. A game being solved is something that takes thousands of hours for some of the brightest mathematicians to figure out, and it might sound like something that ruins a game, but it actually isn't quite as simple as that. Games that are solved aren't necessarily not worth playing, because if the game's complex enough, the average person isn't able to play perfectly at all times. Connect 4 is a solved game, but having a game with your friends isn't going to be ruined because neither of you are are genius mathematicians or godlike Connect Four players, and neither of you are going to understand the optimal strategy at any given time. So the next time someone asks you to play a game of tic-tac-toe, maybe send them this video. Thanks for watching.